On the telephone with me right now is Jeff Bates. Uh, Jeff, good morning to you. Good morning, Frank. Thanks for having me, brother. No problem. Hey, you got some new music out, and it's getting a lot of response. Uh, you've got the new single out called He Wasn't Like Us, and uh, I've played it a few times here in the past few weeks, and right away we got a lot of response on that. Uh, what are you hearing? I'm hearing that everybody totally connects with it. I'm just like, wow, I didn't even think about any of that when I was writing the song because it was, you know, it was just, it was something that I wanted to write because it, it came from a something that happened to me when, back in my childhood. Right. Uh, this single, is this part of a new album you've got coming out? This is actually a song off of my last uh, full album that I put out. This is just self-titled called Jeff Bates. Right. Um, you know, I have a new, I have a new inspirational CD uh, EP out right now called One Day Closer. Right. This particular song comes off the uh, the, the album before. Mm -hmm. One that they felt like they missed uh, the the record label, and I'm glad they did because, you know, I've been working with the Tennessee uh, school, Tennessee State School Resource Officers now for the last four years. And when I have in my spare time, I go speak at schools, and bullying is a big issue there. Uh, I always share this song with them and talk about it. Right. And then, of course, this year, I actually started speaking in churches. And um, I usually start with the Rainbow Man and talk about my adoption, and mm -hmm. that affected me when I learned I was adopted. All the way up to through school and drug uh, drug addiction, too many marriages, uh, winding up in jail, finding Jesus in jail, and uh, the difference he's made in my life in the past 10 years. Right. You've made no secret of the struggles that you've had in your life. I know that you were adopted as a young boy, and uh, you still, to this day, I know you've met your birth mother, but you still don't know about your natural father. Um, again, as you mentioned, uh, you went through a few marriages. Uh, a struggling songwriter for quite a while, and uh, finally you hit it big in, what was it, 2002, 2003, when RCA... 2003. Uh, yeah, 2003, when uh, the uh, Rainbow Man came out. Uh, what was that time like for you? I know uh, it was probably a low point personally, but professionally things were taken off. Well, you know, it wasn't even a low point uh, personally at that time. I was arrested on March 14th of 2001 for drug addiction, uh, for drug possession and for theft. I was actually stealing to support my meth habit. Um, woke up in jail and realized that I was the reason that I was there. I didn't want to be that guy anymore, and I got out and I asked God, got on my knees and gave my life to Christ, and I asked him to help me. Uh, when I got out of jail, uh, I paid everybody back. Right. Um, then I was started writing songs again for Warner Chapel. The following year, RCA offered me a recording contract, and a year later, in '03, I'm out on I'm out touring with Brooks and Dunn and Rascal Flatts and Brad Paisley. Wow! So that was what I learned when I learned that when you really give your life to Christ and say, "Okay, here, do with me what you want to do." Things change, brother. Right. And the arrest and the incarceration turned out to be a positive thing for you. It turned you around. It did, and I used it to, as a positive thing to try to help others with. Uh, right. I'm 10 years clean now. Right. Um, a, a big milestone for me. And so, if, if I, you know, there might have been some people that I offended by sharing the story, but at the same time, I always have felt like and and, and always will that if by sharing what ha my experiences can help save one other person or keep somebody from going through what I went through, help them to avoid that little pitfall, that trap, I'm going to tell it. Right. And you've been active, too, over the past few years, uh, making public service announcements against uh, meth use and methamphetamine. Uh, here in our area, it is a particular scourge that we've been dealing with as well, so it's a, a message that certainly resonates with a lot of people. You know, here's why, I'm, here's why it resonates. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's why it resonates. If we all have this problem in our in our in our hometown, it, it's there. We don't like to talk about it. We prefer it would just go away. It's not without us getting active about it. And any kind of alcoholism, is a drug addiction, and things like that, they, they always stem from uh, from how you feel about yourself. I hated me for a lot of years. Right. You get a healthy, good self image of yourself. Uh, start treating your 
yourself better, be kind to yourself, it can change your life. Yeah. And things did turn around for you uh, about seven, eight years ago. Uh, the love song uh, from uh, Rainbow Man hit the uh, top ten. Tell me, what was it like the first time you heard your own song? Not maybe just a song that you wrote, that you performed on the radio. What's that like? I was in uh, Visalia, California. And I heard Dave Daniels on K-Jug. He, <laughs> he, Vince Gill's next big thing. Right. When that song ended... We're driving down the road. We're actually headed to his radio station, me and the promotion guy from RCA, to go visit Dave. And Dave said, speaking of next big things, here's a new artist out, uh, Jim Bates, with a love song. And I heard it, indeed. I made him pull over us. I got out. <laughs> I cried like a baby. Of course. That's awesome. Yeah. But I mean, that's just something I'd only dreamed of my entire life. Right. And, and actually had let go of the dream, to be perfectly honest with you. I said, okay. I've been to jail. There's no way this is ever going to happen. I don't care if it happens or not. I just want to do what God wants me to do. Right. And uh, I gave, I, I, get, I let it go completely, put it in his hands. Right. I was just going to write songs and then get a record deal. And for that to happen, it totally blew me away. Yeah. I've gone through everything that I had put myself through up to that point, And then to have that happen, it was like, what a blessing. I've only experienced one bigger blessing than that in my life. And that's my seventeen-year-old, seventeen-month-old uh, daughter. Right. A uh, couple of years later, you came out with "Long Slow Kisses," and I got to tell you, Jeff, that's a song I still get calls for this day. The ladies love that song. <laughs> no, I, 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 you know, and again, it was a song that, was a, was a, that stemmed from something that actually happened in my life. Having to turn around and go back and say, "Hey, I'm sorry." Yeah. It's a great tune, and again, it uh, resonates with a lot of people. To this day, I still get a lot of calls for it. Now, let's uh, flash forward to the current, to, uh, you know, to the present time here. Yep. Uh, I understand that you uh, helped co-wrote or co-write, I should say, uh, the song for Trace Atkins' new album, "If I Were a Woman." Is that true? <laughs> if I was a woman, is that true? Yeah, yeah. The same guy that wrote, he wasn't like us. Wrote. <laughs> If I was a woman, I'd love a man like me. <laughs> we're, we're having fun with that single. We've been playing it as well as Trace's current single, Just Fishing, but we heard that tune, and we heard that he was teaming up with Blake Shelton again. I was like, all right, got to play this. And <laughs> well, the fan, the fans are loving it. The fans are loving it. I love it. I, I, hope, that, I hope they'll go ahead and put it out uh, nationwide. Man. Right. It was, great. It, was a, it was a lot of fun writing it, too. Yeah. You know? All it did was said, you know... Every guy, every guy wants girls to like him at some point in his life. And right. He took it to the extreme. Yeah, it's a song we're, we're playing uh, it. We're giving it some airplay. Sir? We're, we're giving it some airplay here. I love you for it, too. Hey, cool. That's mailbox money. There you go. Better buy diapers. <laughs> Tell us what's going on with you right now. Are you touring? Uh, what are you doing? I am touring and, and writing. I am uh, producing a... Uh, and developing a new artist by the name of Michael Ray. You'll be hearing from him. Mm -hmm. He is just amazing, amazing, amazing young man, very talented. Um, and when I'm not doing all of the above, I'm actually doing speaking engagements at churches. So if your church would, if a church in your area would like me to come speak, and I bring my guitar and sing a couple of songs and tell my life story in about an hour a period of time. If you want to give it a listen, actually writing a book about my life and a lot on my plate. Well, that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, it's an amazing thing. Well, Jeff, it's really been cool to talk to you this morning. We appreciate your time and uh, giving us a few minutes here. And uh, we want to, again, uh, mention to everybody, the new single is called He Wasn't Like Us. And uh, you said it's a release from your previous uh, EP, correct? Correct. But the uh, tune itself can be uh, purchased online? It can, on, at uh, jeffbase.net. Right. Also get it on iTunes. Um, if you want it, it's there. All right. Well, what do you say we give it a listen right now? Here's the new one from Jeff Bates. He wasn't like us.